Hi again, home learners. I'm going to be reading chapter one of The Legend of Spud Murphy by Ian Colfer. I'm going to read the blurb just for those who haven't read the book before or missed out at the start of the story. Suddenly, a shadow fell across my brother. It was Spud. She had appeared without a sound, like a ninja librarian. Will and his brother Marty are doomed to spend the holidays in the library. If they put a foot wrong, Mrs. Murphy, the legendary librarian, will use her dreaded gas-powered spud gun, and they don't want that. Just ask U Ugly Frank how he got his nickname. But in Will and Marty, has Spud Murphy met her match? Here's our contents page guys. So there's five chapters in this book and the first chapter is called Ugly Frank. Chapter one, Ugly Frank. I've got four brothers. Imagine that. Five boys under 11 all living in the same house. On wet summer days our house gets very crowded. If we all bring two friends home there could be 15 of us crammed into the house. At least eight will be roaring like lunatics and the rest will be dying to go to the toilet. The flusher in our toilet snaps off about once every three months. When dad came home one day and he found three sons and four strangers covered in war paint, they were swinging from the bedroom curtains as well, he decided that something had to be done. It didn't help that the war paint was stolen from mum's makeup box. No more bringing friends home. Dad declared after the warrior's parents had collected them. That's not fair, said Marty, the biggest brother with mascara streaking down his cheeks. That punishment really affects me because I'm popular. But Will's best friend is his action man. Will, that's me. I love that action man. Johnny, Bert and HP started complaining too, but only because they're little brothers. And that's what little brothers do for a living. I know that technically I'm a little brother too, but I'm in the big brother half of the family. Having one little brother is bad enough, but having three is just too much punishment for one person. That's enough punishment for an entire housing estate. The trouble with little brothers is that they are never blamed for anything. And Donny, Burton, and HB, sorry, all Donny, Burton, and HB have to do is to bat their blue eyes and let their bottom lips wobble a little bit and they are forgiven for everything. Donny, Burton, and HP could stick an axe in my head and they'd just get off with 10 minutes no TV and a stern look. The only things that Marty and I ever agree on is that our three younger brothers are spoilt rotten. This house is a madhouse, said Dad. And he's the chief lunatic, I said, pointing to Marty. I'm not the one talking to dolls, retorted Marty. That hurt. Action Man is not a doll. Quiet, said Dad through gritted teeth. There must be something that we can find for you to do during the holidays, boys. S something to get you out of the house. Not my baby, said Mum, hugging the youngest brother's squad tightly. And they gave her the full baby treatment. Big baby eyes, gap tooth smiles, and HP even started sucking his thumb. That kid has got no shame. Well, maybe not those three, but Will and Marty are nine and ten now, so we can find something for them to do, said Dad. Something educational. Marty and I groaned. Ugh, educational hobbies are the worst kind. They're like doing school during the school holidays. Marty tried to save us. Remember that last educational hobby, the art classes? I was sick for days. Well, that was your own fault, said Mum. Well, I only had a drink of water, said Marty. Yes, but Marty, you're not supposed to drink the water that people use to wash their paintbrushes. Dad was thinking. What about the library, he said finally. What 
What about it? I said, trying to sound casual, but my stomach was churning. Well, you could both join the library. Reading it's perfect. How can you cause trouble reading a book? And it's educational, added Mum. Yes, of course, it's educational too, Dad agreed. How is it educational? I asked, terrified by the idea. I'd much rather be outside riding a horse than inside reading about one. My mother tousled her hair. Because, well, sometimes the only horse you can ride is the horse inside your head. I had no idea what that meant. Don't make us join the library, Marty begged. It's too dangerous. <laughs> dangerous? How could a library be dangerous, Dad asked. It's not the library, Marty whispered. It's the librarian. Mrs Murphy, said Mum, she's a lovely old lady. The problem with grown-ups is that they only see what's on the outside, but kids know the real truth. People forget to be on their best behaviour around kids because nobody believes a word that we say. Every kid in our town knew about Mrs Murphy. She was one of those people that kids steered clear of. Like Miss White, the teacher with the evil eye, or old Ned Sawyer, the tramp with the dribbling dog. She's not a lovely old lady, I said. She's a total nut. Will, that's a terrible thing to say. But she is, Mum. She hates kids, and she used to be a tracker in the army. Tracking kids from enemy countries. Now you're just being ridiculous. She has a spud gun under her desk, added Marty, a gas-powered one that takes an entire potato into the barrel, and then she shoots kids with it if they make a noise in the library. That's why they call her Spud Murphy. My mum thought that this was all very funny. A spud gun? You two would say anything to avoid reading a book. It's true, Marty shouted. Do you know ugly Frank from number 47 down the street? My mother tried to look stern. You shouldn't call poor Frank ugly. Well, how do you think he got that way? Spud Murphy sputtered him. Mum waved her hands as if two annoying birds were flapping around her ears. I've heard enough. You two are going to the library for the afternoon and that's it. We'll make some sandwiches. We stood in the kitchen glumly. Sandwiches wouldn't be much use against Spud Murphy and her spud and her gas-powered spud gun. That's the end of chapter one. Chapter two is called Stay on the Carpet. I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks guys.